want to watch Melbourne Muso's Facebook Live at 6 o'clock, get up. I'll fix him up. Yes, Bruce. Now, we want to watch Melbourne Muso's Facebook Live at 6 p.m. No. Ah! Oh! Oh! Ah! Oh! 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 No, I want to watch the tennis. No. <laughs> you want to watch Melbourne Muso's face chook live? Ready? Melbourne Muso's? No! Ah. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. Hang on, Bruce, I go upstairs to see if I can change the channel. Mm. Hey. Ooh. 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 In the knackers! Ooh. What? No. Did you change the channel? Uh. Mm. So, you want to watch Melbourne Muso's Face to Clive, yes? Yes. Mm. Are you serious? Yes! Oh, uh, Alrighty then. Let's watch Melbourne Muso's Facebook Live at 6 o'clock. Ooh! Eh! Ooh! Ah! Uh, oh! Whoa! How's everybody tonight? Oh! Hot day! Gonna get hotter, maybe. Oh, ooh. oh, my name's Chris Quinlan. Welcome to Mel Amuso's Face Shook Live. Whoa. Now what I'm going to do tonight is sort of carry on a little bit. Which what I was uh, talking about last week, getting back into it. Ooh, what? And a little bit differently too. Drone back later on. So, as I said, Melbourne Muso's first joke live. Chris Quinlan here, getting back into it for 2024. There we go. What I'm going to talk about tonight is a little bit of flow. Getting a bit of flow around the drum kit. Now, um, what I often think about, I think about, I think about Doris a lot. I think about drums a lot. I just sit back on the couch, play computer chess. But I'm still thinking about drums. What am I going to do today? And um, what, I'm, what I'm doing here um, is really today, as I said, carrying on from um, last week getting back into it, as I said. But what it is, is um, when I'm taking the pooch for a walk, when I do this, when I do that, you're exercising. What do you do when you want to create a flow not only just on the, with drums and stuff, but just in life in general. A lot of people go to uh, uh, Tai Chi. And with great respect, I, I often think like sometimes what I do, some of my exercises. is like Tai Chi for drummers. Because after all, when you've got a drum kit, you've got to get around it, you see. Last week, I'm going to carry on with a bit of a sequel to my getting around the drums like so. You know, that kind of thing there. Oh, that sort of stuff, to quote Brucey Lee. Oi! 
must be like water, must flow. Hence the patches tonight, which I'll get on to talking about that. But when we're talking about a drum kit, what we have to do sometimes, we're in the middle, what have we got here? That's a meter to hit this... Uh, We've got a metre there. Oh, there you go. You know, when we're getting over to here. Oh, hello, my beautiful China symbol over there. We've got a metre as well. You know, so when we're talking about memories, uh, is what we've got is... Um <laughs> is um, we have to do everything that we do on a practice pad keep the same flow, whatever it might be, and still be able to be smooth, if you know what I'm getting at. Being able to sort of get everything together, you know, in a cohesive whole. When I'm doing different things like that, as I said, I talk about, you know, I, I mentioned Tai Chi with great respect, so much respect, in fact, that I'm going to talk about. Oh, pardon me. Tai Chi is an internal Chinese martial art practiced for self-defense and health, known for its slow, intentional movements. Tai Chi has practitioners worldwide and is particularly popular as a form of gentle exercise and moving meditation with benefits to mental and physical health. There we go. That's a quick little thing there. And over in my notes... Oh, well, I'll keep on doing it. I'll do another paragraph. Eh. Many forms of Tai Chi are practiced, both traditional and modern. While the precise origins are not known, the earliest documented practice is from Shen Village, Hinan. Most modern styles trace their development to the five traditional schools, Chen, Yang, Wu, Wu and Sun. Practitioners such as Yang Cheng Fu and Sun Lu Tang in the early 20th century promoted the art for its health benefits. Tai Chi was included in the UNESCO list of intangible cultural heritage of humanity in 2020. There you go. That's a quick rundown of Tai Chi. Um, and what happens is, you know, you'll see um, people in a park, in a group, maybe just by themselves, and they're doing... There's four main movements. Um, uh, what have I got there? Uh, the ward off. You've got the roll back, the press, and the push. Okay, and that kind of thing. Now, if I was to sort of try and think in the spirit of that, yet yeah, I'm on a drum set. Because parts of Tai Chi, um, there's, there's certain things in my research that sometimes you do it sitting down, you see. And uh, you're getting that. That's exactly what we're doing, you see. And then when we're talking about the four, four main movements, here's my continuity. Um, what happens is that last week and many times in the past, I talk about the angles. And, um, you know, when I talk about a star, it's one. I'm only starting with this as a base reference, okay, because I've already taught it. But it's, it's level two. There's your star, okay. Line. Did this last week. Triangle. start moving around you see now if I was doing that without hitting anything and I was going uh, Brucey e. baby <laughs> meaning Bruce Lee So when you start doing your rudiments and, um, you know, working them up, I might do something with just right, left, left. 
right, right, left. And work it up. I'll do it on the snare drum first. So if you want to watch Melbourne Muso's face to fly, I guess. Just those yes. two little mini rudiments. Right, left, Are you left. Serious? Right, right, left. Right, right. Yes. doing this you hear the notes um, but if I you know like if I do it say um, do it a bit jazzy maybe uh, if I do it very quickly so then I'll just get these fellas out a bit big for jazz but you know there you go you see but I'll go back to mallets because I've got a purpose in mind <laughs> And you create a flow. Now, when I'm doing a flow, um, there's a thing called pivot points. Um, you have it in just about every instrument under the sun. Um, there's pivot fingers when you're changing chords, you know, that kind of thing. And when you're doing a pivot point with drums, instead of, say, hitting two tom-toms or two drums like... Anything like that, that's good when it's slow, but when you're doing it quicker, you want to pivot a little bit. And it's a little bit like um, turning on and off a shower tap, like this. So you have this. You see, there's the swivel, swiveling. And then when you're doing, say, uh, paradiddle diddle, right, left, right, right, left, left, right, left, right, right, left, left, right, left, right, right, left, left, right, right, left, right, right, left, left. You see, so you, you, you're trying to get your distances with pivot points. You see, now one, two, three, 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 one, And when you're moving around in such ways, you want to keep a low center of gravity and keep your balance. Uh, what often happens is when you're doing everything with heels up, hello boot cam down there, uh, what happens is that's fine in certain ways, you know, that kind of... But sometimes when you're first learning, you know, um, what, what goes on is when you're actually playing, say, a rock beat, and then you want to put in an open hi-hat. You know, that kind of, there's the adjustment for the balance. So I tell all my more beginner students, just keep your heel on the hi-hat. I'll have boot cam for you later on, as per usual. So I'll cut down to there. And you keep your heel on the heel plate, okay? So you're always in balance. Because after all, we're a tripod. You see, what we've got is we've got our uh, right foot, left foot, and our uh, <laughs> bot bot. Your triangle. And so what we try and do. When we're doing that. See, we're, well, we're going like this, you know, that kind of thing, you see. And that starts to lend itself to different kinds of techniques, you see. And um, I'm talking about Tai Chi in great respect. I'm doing kind of a parallel, 
you know, kind of like a Tai Chi as, you know, when I'm doing things like Oh my Lord, how, how, how am I going to do that? Okay, hang on a second. Oi, from there to there, and we've got 150 centimetres, 1.5 metres. And then when you're doing things like this, it's good to set up the, your drum kit for who you are, that kind of thing. I see some drum kits where I go, what's going on there? You know, that kind of thing. And in a kind of a loose uh, way when I'm telling, you know, I'm showing newer students how to set up their drum kit, how do I do it, where, where do I put everything? And I see tom-toms like almost flat. I've got the snare drum like on this gigantic big-ass tilt and all that. And I go, ah! you know, that kind of thing. And what it is, out front, like that, like so. And then what you do is draw a line, okay? You know, that kind of thing, I'll do it above the height of there. And you draw a line. And then what happens is you put your hands out like this, all right? And um, with some exceptions, like this one, like Doris, what you do is have everything in front of you. You see, when I'm talking about the, the main kit here, is, is that bit there. It's essentially a six-piece kit instead of a normal five-piece because I've got the third rectum. Uh, and then what you do is you just make sure every, you can touch everything. Do you see? That kind of thing. Then with your sticks, away you go. You've got a bit of a... And when you're dealing with, um, you know, the tripod, all that, uh, you want to make sure that, you know, like if you've got uh, uh, a typical drum, you know, just a, a, a five-piece, if you've got a double pedal, you'll push the hi-hat out a little bit. But you try and avoid having the hi-hat going over the snare drum. It's, you, you're going to end up like that, and your shoulders are going to go. And, um, and what, so what I make a point of is having a bit of space between the hi-hat and the snare drum, you know. I don't, like my little rule of thumb is don't have it go over the edge, you see. Oh, pardon me. Um, there's that bit. So I've got that much space, and I'm comfy. And then down below I've got the double pedals and all that sort of stuff. And I've got a double kick, two bass drums here, but it's a little bit different from your typical double bass drum setup with two bass drums like that because what will happen then is you'll push your hi-hat out even left, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so I put my second bass drum on the other side of the uh, hi-hat here and I could probably get it a little bit closer. However, once again I'm going to go down to boot cam, I'll have that up for you later. Um, but when I'm doing things like uh, splash hats, I had to set up the bass drum to, uh, or the second bass drum here on the left, so that it, it can accommodate the little kick out, otherwise I'd be kicking the bass drum. It's <laughs> now, Gary Chester is a famous uh, drummer uh, who uh, has um, uh, some wonderful books out and um, he always uh, espoused the fact that there's the fifth limb, your mouth, count. Good old H used to, you know, you got to count. One, yana, two, yana, three, yana, four, yana, one, yana, two, yana, three, yana, four. And I did a show on that just a few weeks ago, or oh, before Christmas actually. And there you go, and then you count. But um, once again, when I'm talking, when I'm teaching, there's always that one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two e and a three and four. E a <laughs> <laughs> I kind of think of. like that. So I tell my little poppets one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a. Breathe in at some point, and um, this is what any any wind instrument does, whether it be brass or woodwind or whatever, you've got to learn to breathe in the right places. Now, because we're talking about um, flow,
Who's heard of box breathing? The box. You breathe in for four. Hold. Breathe out. Hold. Start again. And what that does is it evens everything out, you see. Now usually you do that solo. You can do that anywhere. You can do it on the train coming home. You can do it anywhere at all. But um, I sort of showed you, you know, you can be playing. Now one of the things, I haven't done it for a while, I should do, pull it out again, was I was, um, especially during the lockdowns, I was doing spoken word while I was creating the soundtrack, both things at the same time. Now, that just comes from just time, knowing where you are, having your balance. Working your rudiment. And the vertical and the horizontal, you see. So the vertical is when you're doing your rudiments on a practice pad. We all need to do that. Beautiful. But then you need those rudiments around the drums, whether it's just um, a normal little five-piece or something a bit bigger, all this stuff. Now, because I talk about harmony so much in these kinds of shows, especially since um, the triggers came upon the scene around about um, ooh, 14 years ago, I have the patches up, and now we go to the harmonic part of the evening. Now, Brucey Lee would say, you have to be like water, you have to flow. Ooh. What? No. There you go. <laughs> Sorry. Did you change the channel? So what I've got here is something Oh, I studied a long time ago when I was doing all my orchestration, learning to write for, you know, orchestras, quartets, string quartets, your music theory. You know, I loved it. Still do. There you go. Especially when Sibelius came on the scene, the not notational software thing. Oh, I went to town back in the mid-2000s, sort of thing. And, um, yeah, did a lot of stuff with that. But what you're hearing at the moment is a Celtic harp with a bit of echo on it, I can't think. And my friends, that is a whole tone scale, you see. And what happens with a whole tone scale is that you have your first, your second, your third, your sharp four, sharp five, sharp six. It's a six note scale, it's often known as a hexatonic scale. Swallowed dictionary, Chris. And it's a symmetrical scale. It's a tone between each note. For guitarists, it's just every two frets. Just grab your guitar and go up by two frets. And what you'll start to have is a scale where every note can possibly be the tonic. You, if, like, once you have a C whole tone scale, it's it, it's also a D whole tone scale, just starting on D, and then E, or an F sharp. And the only other scale, you can only have two scales, you can only have two whole tone scales. Uh, the other one is a C sharp whole tone scale. And um, they're the only two, because they're symmetrical. And when you uh, bring them into triads, they're mostly all, uh, or I shouldn't say mostly, they're all augmented chords, okay? No! We want to watch Melbourne Musos. No, I want to watch the tennis. Now, 
Now Claude Debussy loved loved his whole tone and pentatonics. And in a funny kind of way, if I take out um, if I take out the patches for a second. There's a little bit of pentatonic, not a lot pentatonic. Now, we want to watch Melbourne Muso, Facebook Live at 6 p.m. Put them back in, you see. And so when you're dealing with things like that, Starting into, you're getting into kinds of like a parallel harmony kind of thing. Now, I've done a funny thing with the whole tone scale as far as triggering. Over here on my left hand side, very mysterious sound. It's a wonderful sound once you get used to it. There you go. Okay, and then here, what I've done is a little bit of contrary motion. Um, for those of you who don't know, contrary motion is when you're sitting down at the piano and um, what you have is, uh, if you're first learning the piano, you'll have your C major scale going up. One, two, three, thumb under. One, two, three, thumb under to the thing. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. And then what happens is with your left hand, you go down. So it's contrary. You see? There you go. So what I've got here is the drums go down, but the scale goes up. I'll start here. No. There you go, you see. So as you're going down the drums, the scale's going up. So it's a little bit like that. And there it is. All right, look. Oh. oh, what am I going to do now? I'm going to read about the whole tone scale a little bit, I think, is what I was going to do. Oh, let's see. Oh, the whole tone scale. Let me read about it. <coughs> in music, a whole tone scale is a scale in which each note is separated from its neighbours by the interval of a whole tone. In 12-tone equal temperament, there are only two complementary whole tone scales, both six-note or hexatonic scales. A single whole tone scale can also be thought of as a six-tone equal temperament. Didn't I already tell, tell you that? The whole tone scale has no leading tone, and because all tones are the same distance apart, no single tone stands out, and the scale creates a blurred, blurred, I tell you, indistinct effect. This effect is especially emphasized by the fact that triads built on such scale tones are all augmented triads. Didn't I tell you? Indeed, all six tones of the whole tone scale can be played simply with two augmented triads whose root so a major second apart since they are symmetrical whole tone scales do not give a strong impression of the tonic or tonality Brrr. who swallowed a dictionary there the composer Olivier Messiaen oui, called the whole tone scale his first mode of limited transposition there you go and I've mentioned um, Debussy loves his or loved his whole tone scales and I've got here Alexander Scriabin's mystic chord is a primary example, being a whole tone scale with one note raised a semitone. Ooh. This alteration allows for a greater variety of resources through transposition. E. There you go. Go away. Zappa um, loved his whole tone scale on uh, Joe's Garage Act 3. I've got the vinyl, so it's side 4. And the... Uh, 
where he had Vinnie Colliuta doing crazy stuff and then he put the Ampex guitar over the top. Uh, you know about that, don't you? It's, it's a Beatles technique where you might have um, the drummer playing in one kind of time signature and, and Zappa would peel off the drum track because he liked it. And then he'd take this solo that he played somewhere else and it was a whole tone scale and uh, just put them over the top and sat back and just had a listen and went, oh, I like that, I'll do that. And um, there you go. So it's quite a common technique. Um, all I have to do is mention the Beatles doing it on Sergeant Peppers and bang, there you go. All right, take it up with them, I tells you. <laughs> And what happens, I want to, I'm going back to Claude Debussy. One of the things I love doing is the, uh, my whole tone uh, with the Celtic harp or the orchestral harp and bringing in the cymbals. Because one of Debussy's um, magnificent pieces is La Mer, which means the sea. Just the waves rolling, the flow. Something like that. There you go. You know, sort of waves and the waves rolling and, you know, that kind of biz. There you go. Now, I've got something else I want to talk about. I've got, I'm, I'm loading it up today and I'm going to go a little bit longer than usual under this subject. But let me just quickly recap. I'm halfway through, really, the way that I'm thinking. Is that I started off with Tai Chi for drummers. Yes. And uh, what happens is that... Um, with great respect, you know, there's the movements you see people do for Tai Chi. And when I sit behind, you know, Doris here with 1.5 metres and all, you know, you've got to move between with a graceful flow. Now, I'm being a bit deliberately loose here. To try and create that flow. And then with the breathing, which is the um, what I'm doing there, the box breathing and stuff like that, I'm not doing it now. But I'm able to talk while I play. Now that's a combination of just practicing. And having it having your rudiments you know, for guitarists, anybody else, their scales, but having it natural. So it's, you're not thinking about, you're not sitting there going, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, right, right, left, <gasps> like that, you're just going. And when I think of, say, a paradiddle like this, I'm not thinking right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. I'm just thinking groups now. Right, left, 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 right, left. Right, left, right, left. There you go, you see, just that one. So on it goes, you just work it up. Oh, the good old practice pad, there you go. But then you move it around. Ah, uh, to stars, one drum. I'm recapping. If you've only just joined, I'm recapping. Okay, got a line. Two feet and your 
talk about a new little thing here called the Alexander Technique. I've got my book. There it is there. Ooh. Mr. Alexander. Now before, um, oh, I'll just read the back. The Alexander Technique is a unique system of mind and body awareness. This inspired, comprehensive and authoritative guide to the background benefits and beauty of the Alexander Technique explains the history, practical procedures, how you can come to your senses and evaluate evaluate your feelings. Hey, Chris, come to your senses, mate. Why the exhaling... uh, I can't get your lips together. Why the Alexander Technique improves performance, step-by-step photographic sequences showing the technique in action. Real case study showing how the Alexander Technique is applied to different professions and hobbies. From Tai Chi to writing, to music. See, it all comes together. We have a flow. (laughs) And my little bookmark goes to performance skills in the arts. The arts. The word form has two meanings. The verb to form means to mold by discipline, to train or to instruct. The noun form means the shape, arrangement of parts, or the shape of the body. When the form of an athlete, musician, or even a horse is discussed, it is the state of health and condition of training that is being judged. Oh, that's just the first little bit there. And then there's, um, because this is the performance skills, I'll just read this little bit here. There it is there. Performance strategy. Now, a lot of you... Guys and girls going out gigging tonight. You're gigging, mate. You're gigging. There you go. Preparation, action, or recovery. Inhibition and direction. Observe the manner of preparation. Accept that impulses can be counterproductive. Stop to establish a readiness, an openness, and willingness to communicate. The desire to perform. Identify the wish to perform, the character's need or purpose. This will elevate your energy level. Increase lengthening and widening. Breathe out. Box breathing. There you are. Everything's coming together. Anticipation. Think about the performance. Continue to give preventive directions. When I go, I will not disturb my neck any more than necessary. There's, I don't want to name any names or anything like that, but I think all of us can see certain drummers uh, that are getting on a bit and all of a sudden they're in trouble. Something's happened to their neck, they can't drum anymore. And probably the most heartbreaking thing is having a doctor say, you can't drum anymore. It's like football players hurting their neck and say, you've got to stop. Concussion is such a big thing these days. You've got to stop. You can't do it anymore. Sorry. And it's heartbreaking. Okay, there you go. So anyway, I want to talk it up. But um, uh, as I said, when I go, I will not disturb my neck any more than necessary. Go means go. Give up trying to get it right and allow things to happen. Accept the unknown. Open to the unexpected. You're looking at it right now. (laughs) Ah, There you go. Return to stillness. There it is. Inhibit and direct to re-establish full stature. Reflect on the performance and ask the questions. Did I stiffen my neck and pull my head back any more than I needed to? Did I end gain? Did I do unnecessarily? Did I force my responses or were they true to the moment? I'm hoping what I'm doing is true to the moment. There you go. And the last little thing. Do not try too hard. Return to stillness and allow things to happen. It's a funny thing when you say do not try too hard because what starts to happen is the reason I can sort of talk. Is because it's all in the preparation. 
all that work you've done. And just at the end of the day, like Alan Zavod said to me once, at some point, you got to go with what you got. And while I'm sounding like I'm just improvising and making things up, I hope you can see the different layers that I'm doing. Bring in things like the hi-hat there, a bit of air. More things have them come around, in and out, in between. Being able to talk over the top, which is about breathing and counting. And because I'm using the whole tone scale, I hope you're sort of hearing a kind of a flow, like the sea, la mer. And after a bit of um, mystical business, form that I was just talking about with the Alexander thing. Bring in the beat. Five main points. I've talked about a little bit there. I write them down. The rec recognition of habit, inhibition and non-doing. Sort of alluded to that just before. Recognition of faulty sensory awareness. Giving directions. Primary control. Where does all that come from? When Sometimes when you're seeing... Um, I was talking about music, but if I'm going to go across to say opera, there could be the death scene, you know, and the, the soprano, she's playing out going, oh, you know, whatever, laying out on a bed with the arms outstretched and all that, but have a close look at the position, they're all scrunched up, the, notice that the book was always talking about the neck, what goes through the neck? Your airflow. So when you're looking at, say, the opera singer doing their big final scene laying out on the bed or on wherever it is, have a look at where the neck is. Have a look at the body. Wherever you are, they still have a clear flow for their breath. So you're trying to, in the most simplest of ways, you're trying to stay smooth, you're trying to stay balanced, low centre of gravity. That's sport. You know, when you're seeing soccer players just, you know, the Ronaldos of the world, oh, there's grace in motion, you know. Messi and all the people there. Jezza, back in the day. Back to that right, left, left, right, right, left. Oh, the 
something there for you. I've uh, got the gift of the gab tonight. I'm actually, I tell you what I'm doing in all honesty. Um, um, after my little holiday, um, getting back into it. I just uh, wanted to do a double episode. Get back into it. And talk about all the different things. I've done a few things, so I'm going to take you through it once again, just as headings now. Tai Chi for drummers, with great respect to the craft. And drumming wise, star, line, triangle, square, box breathing. Four, one, two, three, four, one, two, in, hold, out, in, hold, in, out, hold, hold tone scale. One, two, three, sharp four, sharp five, sharp six, octave. Debussy. Alexander Technique. So there you go. I better wrap it up. I hope you got something out of tonight. It's pretty out there. And my name is Chris Quinlan. And uh, this is Melbourne Muso's Vestuk Live. Uh, Call it a double, if you will. And um, what it is, is um, talking about these wonderful things. I I just am fascinated. I do, when when I'm preparing on a Friday for Vestukeries and then eventually doing all the editing send it off to good old 31 and the whole business there. I sometimes just get lost in it. I just, I just sit here and next thing I know it's two hours have gone. I go, oh, I better go eat, you know, that kind of thing. So, go check it out. There you go. Oh, where's my background here? Oi, oi, oi. Oi, I don't know. Love you all. Hey, oh, 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 we want to watch Melbourne Musos. Oh, I want to so. watch the tennis. Are you serious? Yes. Oh, uh, alrighty then. Let's watch Melbourne Musos. Facebook Live at six o'clock.